Okay. Here we are at the uh, 10th of the 6th. 10th of, of the 6th, 2.15. Paradise Now Church, JDCM Mission. Midweek teaching. And uh, we're going to be reading out of the New Testament today, out of Luke. Going to have a look there. Parable of Jesus in Luke 16. We're going to start in verse 19. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple, fine linen, fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. He was full of sores who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in, in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and... Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. And he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. Very interesting, isn't it? That's a very, uh, very fruitful parable. It's loaded with fruit. Great warning. A great warning for the people of God is this parable. Great warning for every person that's ever come in contact with God. The title of our message today is Who was the real rich man? In the parable of the rich man and Lazarus Who was the real rich man? I mean we know the world the world would think that the rich man was the rich man. But the real rich man, at the end of the day, hey? so many uh, people today are so taken away with location. Location, location. So many are concentrated on where they're going to live. In what location will they live? Uh, what housing will they have? That they're letting the external control the internal. They're letting the the material control the spiritual and the emotional and the soul, because they don't have the Holy Ghost. 
to guide them or they are born again and they do have the Holy Ghost but they don't want the Holy Ghost to lead them. We know that these are the sons of God. Hey? These are the real sons of God. And these are the real rich. Those who are led by the Spirit of God. Luke 16 verse 19 said there was a certain rich a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And then it says, but there was a certain beggar. You see, this certain rich man, he knew God. Not all rich men know God. Not all rich men know God. But it says there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple, fine linen. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Not all beggars are glory bound. Not all poor people will go to heaven. And outside the rich man's gate all his entire life wanting some crumbs from the rich man's plate all his entire life all his entire life Outside the gate, suffering outside with the people of God. Outside the gate, suffering the reproach of Christ. Suffering the reproach of Christ. Not all who say they are Israel are Israel. Not all who say they are Christian are Christian. This message today was confirmed by a woman who came to me on the street yesterday. Straight away I thought, this is incredible. This woman said to me, not all who say they're Christian are Christian. Are they, Pastor? I said, exactly. But this, this certain beggar named Lazarus, who was full of swords and laid at the gate, had a intact relationship with God. He was rich. He was a rich man. He, he was a man that was waiting on an inheritance that can't be counted. Eh? Who was the real rich man is the title of our message today and if we turn in our bibles to second corinthians 4 let's just go there second corinthians 4 second corinthians 4 and the verse is 18 while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Rich man fed so sumptuously all his entire life. Dressed in purple and fancy things all his entire life. All his entire life. But the day come, didn't it, when the rich man died? Oh, the rich man died and went to hell for eternity. Rich man died and went to hell for eternity. Lazarus died and was glory bound. 
for eternal life. Lazarus died and was glory bound for eternal life, for eternal life. So Luke tells us very clearly here. In verse 21, Luke 16, 21, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to the bosom of Abraham the rich man also died and was buried the angels wouldn't touch the angels wouldn't touch the rich man but the beggar with sores they carried him I mean that is the contrast on its own also not many people would want to pick up a uh, sore infested beggar and carry them anyway but the rich man who uh, was dressed in purple and fancy things it says that he died and was buried in verse 23 and being in torments in hell or hides he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. That word there torments is plural. So he didn't just have one torment. He wasn't just tormented by one thing. He was tormented by many things. But the greatest torment in hell will be regret. Right? The greatest torment in hell will be regret. Outside the gate, suffering outside with the people of God. Outside the gate, suffering the reproach of Christ. Suffering the reproach of Christ. Who was the real rich man? Let's go to 2 Corinthians 6. 2 Corinthians 6 and the verse is 10. Hey? The verse is 10. We appear sorrowful yet always rejoicing. We appear poor yet making many rich we appear as having nothing and yet possessing all things who was the real rich man oh look in a world of materialism we live in a world of materialism we live in a world where money is everything today Recently on the news, Alan Bond once again had heart problems and from what I have heard, he's dead. And I don't think he's having a state funeral. Alan Bond was tied up with racing cars and the top end of town. He laid hold of the America's Cup in the yachting field for the Australian people. Australia never had an America's Cup win, but Alan Bond laid hold of it. He was also tied up in a, a lot of fraud in, in Western Australia, big dollars stuff. But uh, his bad health led to his death. And the question asked would be, did he know Jesus? Or was he like this rich man who'll end up in hell? 
But I have to correct myself, I believe, and and uh, admit that I, I have said many a time, but did this person know Jesus? Which is not really uh, precise. When someone dies, a lot of people say, did they know Jesus? That's really not the soul-saving question. The soul-saving question is, did he love Jesus? Did she love Jesus? They might have been enlightened, but were they in love? That's the new covenant agreement. That's the New Testament agreement that we we love Jesus, not that we know Jesus, not that we have met Jesus. Hey, but that we love Jesus. It's not a matter of being enlightened and enlightened and illuminated. But do we love Jesus? Luke 16, 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, cool my tongue for I am tormented in the flame. I'm tormented in the flame. Hey? There are flames. I am tormented. He was crying. But have a look who he's crying to. He's crying to a man. He's crying out to Abraham. He called him Father. And how many, how many think their pastor or their father or their dad or their spiritual father or, or, or a wealthy man or a human can help them or save them. How many think that today? How many cry out to a mere man like Abraham? He can't save us. The pastor can't save you. And outside the rich man's gate all his entire life wanting some crumbs from the rich man's plate all his entire life all his entire life outside the gate suffering outside with the people of God outside the gate suffering with the people of God Suffering the reproach of Christ. Lazarus took his lot handsomely that he was laid there. Hey? This was in God's plan. We can't understand that. How God allows some people to be rich and he allows others to be poor. But God knows what he's doing. He's omniscient. And I believe the Lord looks to see if we're going to whinge and whinge and complain all our lives, all our way, that way to hell. Or whether we're going to keep things right in our heart with God, just like this, this beggar. He didn't have a bad attitude. 
He had dogs. Look, he didn't see any friends he had. Someone lied him at the gate. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate. Someone took him there and laid him there, thinking, well, this man is rich. I can't look after him. The rich man might give him some food as he passes out the gate. Drop him off a, a snack pack or something. No. Little, little did the rich man know that the beggar outside his gate was richer than him. It's crazy. It's contrary to the way of the world and Adamic thinking. Messianic thinking, Messianic thinking is contrary to Adamic thinking. Messianic theology is contrary to religious theology. Can someone say amen? Hey? Eh? So, Luke 16, 25, But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received, you received your good things and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is confident in you were tormented. We can't have our cake and eat it too. I like what it says here, verse 25. Abraham said, Son. How many sons don't heed their father's words? How many sons? They just don't heed their father's words. How many churchgoers and ministers? They just don't heed their father's words. Abraham called him son. He, this, this rich man had knowledge of God. God allowed this rich man to know him. But look what happened. Many would say he's blessed of God. Look at all the stuff he has. That's the blessing of God. Hey. Right? That's the blessing of God on his life. But look at the look at the heart condition. It must have been the blessing of God. But look what he done with the blessing. Son. Abraham called him son. A son of the faith. Can we go to Acts, please? Acts. Acts chapter 3. We'll have a look there. Hey? Acts chapter 3. Rich man died and went to hell for eternity. Rich man died and went to hell for eternity, for eternity. Acts 3.23 And it shall come to pass that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed among the people. Utterly destroyed. Hey? The word is every soul. That includes male and female. Doesn't say every man, every soul. Hey? This rich man didn't listen. He didn't heed the words of God. He didn't do what the Lord said. Hey? The Lord said to feed the hungry. 
Lord said to clothe the naked. Lord said to help the poor. Especially this man was rich. He wasn't just a man, an average man. He was a rich man. But who was the real rich man? It was Lazarus. And in the world today, hey, we see they call evil good and good evil. Hey? And location is everything. Location is everything. People want the best location in town, the best suburb to live in. I don't want to live here. I want to be where the rich live. I don't want to be outside the gate. Hey? I want to be a a outside of the city or outside of the, the wealthy area. That's where the beggars are. Outside the gate Suffering outside with the people of God Outside the gate Suffering the reproach of Christ Suffering the reproach of Christ Let's go over to Hebrews hey? The rich man didn't listen Now he's in torment He's in hell. He can't cope. And he's crying out to his father in the faith. Hebrews 11. And the verse is 25. Moses chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Outside the gate Suffering outside with the people of God Outside the gate Suffering the reproach of Christ Suffering the reproach of Christ. This is Moses. Moses was outside. He chose to be outside the gate. Hey? Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Why wouldn't he? He had a revelation. Esteeming, lifting up the trouble that we could encounter, lifting that up, the trouble that we could encounter for walking with Jesus, doing what he says, greater riches than the rich man had, than the riches of Egypt. And there was Lazarus, the angels came and carried him to glory, to the bosom of Abraham. Hey? Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. The beggar chose not to be dishonest. The beggar chose to just be himself in Christ. Not be himself. Hey? But to be himself in Christ. The beggar chose. And the end result was glory. But Alan Bond, a man famous, well known in Australia and throughout the world. Where would he be? Where will he be heading? To hell or to heaven? Hey? Hell or heaven? We need to be concentrating on 
our location for eternity, not so much our temporary location. We don't want to be be snared by the devil and taken away by the devil and 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 waylaid by the devil, getting bogged down in how much money we have today. What housing do we live in today? I know for me, every time I walk into the house, the, the, the rented house that I live in, every time I walk into it, I always know and see it as a place where I can rest my head, have a shower, have something to eat, and a quiet time with the Lord. I don't see it as anything else. The house that I live in is not my end. The house I live in really doesn't depict or paint a portrait of me. My, the words that come out of my mouth paint the picture, the real picture of me. A glory bound man. Hey? We need to we need to make sure that we are we're in love with Jesus. It's not good enough to know Jesus. It's not good enough to be cleansed from our sin. It's not good enough to be enlightened and enlightened and illuminated. It's not good enough. We have to be in love. There's no way in the world the beggar could have been ushered and carried to heaven if he wasn't in love with Jesus, if he wasn't in love with God. It, it's not possible. Hey? It's just not possible. The Lord in this parable is showing us contrasts. Strong contrasts. The Lord is showing us very strong contrasts here. In the rich man and Lazarus. And outside the rich man's gate all his entire life wanting some crumbs from the rich man's plate all his entire life all his entire life outside the gate suffering outside with the people of God Outside the gate, suffering the reproach of Christ, suffering the reproach of Christ. The rich man fared sumptuously. Okay? And we know he was a certain rich man, meaning he wasn't like every other rich man. This man had a relationship with God. And he was rich. And he didn't obey God. He didn't feed the hungry, did he? He didn't clothe the poor. He didn't care. He wore purple and fancy things, yet he didn't obey him. As I said, it's not enough to know Jesus. It's not enough to be enlightened or enlightened. It's not enough to be illuminated, to have revelation. 
We have to love Jesus. To repeat myself is so. Philippians 3 1. In Luke 16 25. Abraham said, Son, he was a son that never obeyed. Many have sons that don't obey, but they are sons. But they don't obey and they end up in hell. Right? As I said before, this certain beggar was also different to the other beggars. He was a certain beggar. Just like when Philip was walking in the spirit, the evangelist Philip, it was a certain chariot that he uh, flagged down and the Lord drew him to. And there's certain men and women that are called to do certain things. And if we don't do it, how can we escape the fires of hell? Hey? Luke 16, 26. And besides all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot nor can those from their past to us. The, the gap is fixed. Abraham was saying to the rich man, I can't do anything. I, I, I just can't do anything. It's out of my hands. And this, this rich man, who never really did walk in the Spirit, still calling on a man. To help him. And the Roman Catholics call on the dead, don't they? They call on the departed to help them. Well, we see here in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, that is not, it's not possible for them to do anything. Especially Abraham, the father of the faith. He couldn't help him. Right? We think our father can help us and we think... Men can help us and the pastor is going to save us. And, but no one can save us, only Jesus. God save the Queen. Hey? Kerr's Kerr. No. God save the Queen. Because no one else can but Jesus. Her riches won't save her. Her, her, her corgi dogs won't save her either. I mean, they look cute, yes. But they won't save her. We, people I see and meet daily, church people, they're so bogged down with location, location, and where they're going to live. But if they got in the spirit, they would see it's all the same. Every place I've been, I don't care if it's London, Spain, I don't care if it's... Uh, the soils of Africa or, or Philippines, it's all the same to me. It all looks the same. There's food, there's clothes, there's there's air, there's sun, there's maybe a little bit of a twist in the atmosphere. But the Lord has uh, boiled all that up for me and boiled all the impurities out of it and shown me clearly that we need a specific location to live in from day to day. It's not, as I said before, I go into more, I, I, every time I go home and I'm going to have lunch or cup of tea or rest or, or do some things at home, that's all it is. The four grey walls that surround me. It, it, it's a place to shower, rest my head, have something to eat uh, 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 and revive the body and go back out again, proclaim the wonderful message that, hey, Jesus is coming. Hey? And he's preparing a place for his. In his Father's house for many men. If it were not so, I would have told you so, but because it is so, I prepare a place for thee. 
I am the way. There is no other way. Outside the gate, suffering outside with the people of God. Outside the gate, suffering the reproach of Christ. Suffering the reproach of Christ. Rich man died and went to hell for eternity. The rich man died. Went to hell for eternity, for eternity. Lazarus died and was glory bound for eternal life. Lazarus died and was glory bound for eternal life. He loved the Lord. Even though he was a beggar, he was a certain, he was an earmarked beggar. <laughs> so, the title of our message today, Who Was the Real Rich Man? We appear poor, but make many rich, don't we? Hey? Luke 16, 26, and besides all this between us, there is... Between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. It, it sort of every time I read that, I think of the door closing in the ark. It's a God thing. It's fixed. It can't be changed. Simone, Jesus said, "I can't do anything about your you, your sons. It's already set and fixed." Father has organised that. Who would sit on my left and my right? I, I can't do that. Abraham was a type of Jesus. And he's saying to the rich man, I can't. I can't help you. You had your chance. And you messed it up. Luke 16, 27. It's getting serious, isn't it? I mean, these are serious times we live in. Luke 16, 20, then he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house. Who's the beggar now? Outside the gate, suffering outside, people of God outside the gate suffering the reproach of Christ I beg you now the roles are reversed now he's begging everyone in hell will beg they'll beg They'll be crying out to, uh, in their insanity, crying out to humanity still, in their unbelief, thinking Abraham can do something. It's too late. There'll be no human. The gulf is fixed. The distance is fixed. No one can change it. There's no purgatory mentioned. Hey. Eh? They can cry out to Mary as much as they like. Mary can't help them. Who was the real rich man? Isn't it ironic? It's, it's crazy. The Edemic and the Messianic. The Edemic are always looking, aren't they, at the now and the, where I live and how much money I have and who likes me and oh boy. It's so pathetic. But the Messianic, they look far beyond the sunset. <laughs> he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house. I wanted him to change everything. It's too late. 
when the body dies, it's too late. For I have five brothers. Oh, the Lord would not be happy about this. I think he might have increased the torments. And we know he had more than one torment by Luke 16. We read before that he was in torments. In verse 24, or was it 23? And being in torments. So they were coming from all directions, the torment. It wasn't one. You know how you're tormented by something? It's a singular thing and you keep going over it and over it and you're trying to ascertain, you're trying to find resolve and you just keep going over this thing and over it and over it. Thinking, oh. But he had torments. So there's one thing after the other, just beating him while he burned in the fire. I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house. And I have five brothers. And he may testify to them, it's too late. You're being testified to today. People who are listening to this are being testified to today. Every day of the week I go out and testify to people that day. There'll be no testifying after the body's dead. It'll be all over. No more testimony. The gospel will be preached to every creation. Then the end will come. And those who endure to the end of their life or the end, whatever comes first, they will be saved. Those who love Jesus. Not those who know him, not those who are enlightened or enlightened, enlightened. Not those who are illuminated. Not those who were blood washed. Not those who were sealed, but those who are faithful to the end. These are the sons of God who are led by the Spirit of God. If that rich man was led by the Spirit of God, he wouldn't be there. Led by greed, selfishness. Led by his Edemic person. And the Edemic attitude and the Messianic attitude, are, there's a gulf fixed between them. Two different ways completely. I beg you. I have five brothers that he may testify to them. Abraham said in verse 29, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. Once again, we come back to Acts 3.23. If they don't want to hear the words of the Lord, God Almighty, the great prophet Jesus, Okay. God would have been made wroth even more with this rich man in verse 28. He was thinking of his family again, family first again. All he's thinking about is his five brothers. There was no repentance whatsoever with this rich man. He just kept going on in his own headstrong way. In, the, in his own way, his Adamic thinking, even though he was a son of Abraham. Most probably a Jew. But not all Israel are Israel. As I said, the woman yesterday was talking to me on the street and she said not all Christian are Christian are they pastor I said exactly and I said your mother might not be your mother either because she was telling me how her mother disapproved of what she said 
Because this woman was born again. I said, the Lord will show you a shocking truth. Your mother's not your mother. And your mother don't know. Woe is me. Shame and scandal at the judgment stand. Hey? Your mother's not your mother and your mother don't know. They're my mother. They're my sister. They're my brother. They're my wife. They're my husband. They're my children who hear the word of God and do it. And do it. And do it. Enlighten, enlighten, illuminate and in love. That's the agreement, the covenant we made with Jesus to love him more than our five brothers, to love him more than our family, to love him more than our riches, to love him more. Right? Who was the real rich man? I dare say it was Lazarus. Okay? I dare say it was Lazarus. Matthew 20, can we go there please? Outside the gate. Suffering outside with the people of God. Just like Moses. Okay? He chose that. He didn't want to be the son of the Prime Minister, the Pharaoh. Matthew chapter 20. Can we go there? Matthew 20. Hallelujah. Outside the gate. Matthew 20 verse... 15. Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? Or is your eye evil because I'm good? So the last will be first and the first last. For many are called, but few choose to obey. Many are called, but few... The rich man, he chose not to obey. But we know the Lord called him because he called Abraham father. Abraham confirmed with son. You remember you had all your splendiferous things? All your, all your life. All your life. Lying outside the rich man's gate All his entire life Wanting some crumbs from the rich man's plate All his entire life All his entire life All his entire life All his entire life All his life all his love just throws that garbage prosperity message out the window doesn't it all his entire life but yet he was a man of God that beggar wouldn't think of it would you a man of God he must have been something special at heart because it says the angels carried him Sores and all. Hey? Those days you don't go near people with sores on them. Don't go near lepers and don't go near beggars. Hey? You know the poor man he is not even welcomed by his own family. They don't really want to know him. And nor do the relatives. It's very hard for a poor man to make friends. He really hasn't got anything, has he? 
Hey? But to think that if only the poor will fall in love with Jesus and love Jesus first and foremost, they'll be carried into a, a totally heavenly realm. Even though they're poor, they'll be carried into a heavenly sphere. They'll be taken up on wings like eagles. We need to remember that our location is written in the Bible, where we're to be. If we go to Psalm 91, let's have a look there. Psalm 91. Verse 1, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Hey? <laughs> hey? Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler, from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Oh, hallelujah, eh? Glory. That's where I believe. The beggar Lazarus was actually dwelling, really dwelling. But they, in the Edemic mindset, seen him outside a rich man's gate. But the truth of the whole parable is there was a rich man outside the poor man's gate. <laughs> the poor old rich in his purple, faring sumptuously, Preparing a place in hell for himself. And outside his gate was an infinite air. Lazarus. Who was the real rich man. Hey? Alan Bond. Where will he be? Where will he live eternally? Will he go to hell? And he fared sumptuously. All his life, with the America's Cup and, and his racing cars, his flamboyancy. But where will he be now? Will it be the fires of hell? Hey. Was he ever a son of Abraham? Ever. And we see it's not once saved, always saved at all. We see that even though the rich man was a son of Abraham, that wasn't enough. Jesus said that, didn't he? He said, don't you dare go saying to me, to the Pharisees even, oh, we're sons of Abraham. He said, that's not enough. And it's not enough to be born again, to be saved. It's not enough to be enlightened and enlightened. It's not enough to be illuminated. We have to be in love. We have to be in love with Jesus. We can't just crank that up at the last minute to be in love with Jesus. You just think about it in the natural. If you try, could you imagine if a person came along and you just wanted to be in love with them? You just said, oh yeah, I can be in love with you in two seconds. It just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Because love grows where the Holy Ghost goes. And nobody knows like me. <laughs> hey? There's a lot of foolish people out there that think, that Paul Sheehan is poor and Paul Sheehan is, is, is a loser. It's just because they're blind. They can't see. Right? They're blinded 
by the light of Lucifer. Right? They're looking at the seen and not the unseen. Hey? Glory to the Lamb. Let's go to Psalm 29, please. Psalm 29 and the verse is 9. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth. Oh, hallelujah. And strips the forest bare. And in his temple, everyone says glory. <laughs> everyone says glory. Hi. When we dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Secret place. The Word of God. Word of God is a secret place. Word of God is the secret place. All is eternal life. All is eternal life. Lazarus died and was glory bound for eternal life. Lazarus died and was glory bound for eternal life. For eternal life. Hebrews 13. Can we go there? Hebrews 13. Hi. Another cry of the Lord. Hebrews 13, 13. Therefore let us go forth to him outside the gate, bearing his reproach. Moses went there. Paul went there. Paul, all the things he could have had, he said, I count them as dung to go outside the gate. <laughs> and Moses, Lazarus was outside the gate, a rich man, hey, just wanting something to eat for the now. No complaints <coughs> written about Lazarus complaining. And Job, once again outside the gate of riches, stripped to the bone. Hey? <laughs> Outside the gate. Let's go outside. That's why the Lord wants us outside the gate. Hey? Setting us free from temptation's way. Outside the gate. Setting us free from temptation's way. Outside the gate. Outside the gate. A dry morsel in righteousness outside the gate. A dry morsel with righteousness outside the gate. Peering poor, making many rich outside the gate. Appearing poor, making many rich outside the gate sorrowful but filled with joy outside the gate looking sorrowful but full of joy outside the gate outside the gate outside the gate following Jesus the Christ outside the gate Leaving our religious ways behind outside the gate. Outside the gate, it's the safe place, isn't it? It's where the riches are. 
outside the gate in the spirit away from the Adamic mindset locking into the messianic mindset let's turn in our bibles to matthew 16 outside the gate outside the gate matthew 16 in the verses 25 Let's read 24 also. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me outside the gate. Jesus is outside the gate without the camp. Jesus is not religious, he's righteous. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. And Lazarus could have had a great life. But... It was all lost. It was as if he didn't have a life. He's just a beggar. And God designed it. He just wanted Lazarus to be in glory. <laughs> and he put him to the test. We know that Lazarus was laid there to put the rich man to the test. But you know Lazarus was also put to the test. To see if he'd still love Jesus. To see if he'd still love God even though he was a beggar. Instead of looking at his navel and saying, why have I got to be poor? I'm not going to follow you now, God. You better give me some money and I, otherwise I won't follow you. Out inside the gate. Suffering with the people of God. Outside the gate. Suffering the reproach of Christ. Suffering the reproach of Christ. I looked for a king with a motorcade, but he came on the goat. Looked for a king in a motorcade, but he came in a donkey coat. Came on a donkey coat. That was a reproach there, wasn't it? Hey? That he never came looking so fancy like a king. Hey, what a put down. That's not a king. He's got no treasures with him. That's not our king. He's got no chariot. Outside the gate, suffering with the people of God. Outside the world, suffering with the people of God. Separated to God. Whoever desires to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. For what is a man profit if he gains the world? He's a rich man and loses his own soul. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels and then the reward. And then he will reward each according to their works. Surely I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in the kingdom. We get our just rewards, don't we? We reap what we sow. We need to plant messianic seed. If we love Jesus, we will reap glory. We will reap heaven. If we love ourselves or, or, or the world or our families or our five brothers more we will surely repel if we don't want to give up our lives that rich man could have sold all his goods and gave to the poor he could have sold everything and, and reassured himself a place in heaven by loving Jesus first by loving God first but now he left it as many think they're going to do. Right? Luke 16, 24. 
Look at the time. He's crying out for mercy. Outside the gate, suffering outside with the people of God. Outside the gate, suffering with the people of God. Suffering the reproach of Christ. Luke 16. Cried out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Cried out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. It's a bit late for mercy. There's no mercy at the judgment stand. We're in the dispensation of grace and mercy. Now's the time of salvation. Now, right now. We need to have that urgency to run out there today. <laughs> hey? Run out there today. Don't stop. Never cease giving the message. Never cease taking the message out, letterboxing, preaching on the streets. And everyone that's standing next to you, tell them Jesus is coming. You need to repent. You need to turn from your sin and walk in the light if you want to be saved. But you have to love him. That's the 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 um, criteria. We have to love Jesus if we're going to be with him. That's the new covenant. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, strength. No reservation. Amen. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus. Still, no priority for God. But all God wants is preeminent in our life. But still, mention of Abraham, mention of Lazarus, who else? Yeah, he's still thinking of himself. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water. Cool my tongue. <laughs> No, I thought if I deserved this. No, no, not like the one that hung on the cross next to Jesus. I deserved this. I've got my just reward. Hey? The Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with the angels and then he will reward each accordingly to their works. Hey? He's getting his just reward. He had his time. He's received his consolation. Hey? Lady Diane had her consolation. She had it on her. Hey? Ellen Bond. And who else was there? The crazy John. He had his time. He could have turned to Jesus. Heart attack out of nowhere, time up. Hey? Steve Irwin, he had his time. The Lord even sent a messenger while he was still breathing to give him a message saying, Hey, it's time to repent. Outside the gate, suffering with the people of God. Outside the gate, suffering the reproach of Christ, suffering the reproach of Christ. Oh, the rich man died and went to hell for eternity. Rich man died and went to hell for eternity, for eternity. Lazarus died in his glory bound for eternal life. Lazarus died in his glory bound for eternal life. For eternal life. Galatians 6. Let's go there, please. Galatians 6. Chapter 6, we're going to look at verse. 
6. Galatians 6, 6. Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man or a woman sows, that they will also reap. He who sows and she who sows to their flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he or she who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. See that? Everlasting life. Sow unto the Spirit. The rich man sowed to the flesh. The rich man chose the Adamic thinking. He didn't want to put on the mind of Christ. It was no problem for the rich man to take Lazarus in. Even Lazarus uh, wasn't asking for accommodation. Right? Luke 16, 20. There was a certain beggar earmark for glory a certain beggar named Lazarus full of sores who laid at his gate hey? what was he wanting he just wanted crumb outside the gate outside the gate wanting some crumbs to eat just wanting the crumbs Crumbs. They couldn't even give him that. Begging for crumbs. And likewise, the rich man was begging for a drop of water. A drop of water. Still thinking of himself. Eh? Still looking after his flesh. Still sowing to the flesh. Didn't want to be tormented. I want to be cooled down. Want to put the air conditioner on. Right? That rich man could have blessed that beggar. Taking him and giving him a little room somewhere down the back. Right? Some meals. He would have been blessed. The rich man would have been blessed beyond his socks if he would have taken that beggar in because that beggar he, he loved Jesus. Outside the gate, suffering with the people of God. Outside the gate, suffering the reproach to cry. Suffering the reproach to cry. He must have really had something going with Jesus, with God, because he, he was ushered. The angels came and, and carried him. Man, love. <laughs> I tell you, he had something happening there. He had a relationship beyond a relationship. I'd say he was in love. He was a covenant-keeping man. Old Lazarus. And he reaped what he sowed. He sowed his... His heart. So did his heart. Who was the real rich man? That's the title today, isn't it? We know who the real rich man is. Right? It's like the rich man that built the barns. He said, oh, I'm going to do this now and I'm going to do that. And I've got plenty now. I've done this and done that. And the Lord said, hey, now it's time to be judged. You fool, I'm going to call on your soul tonight. Huh? James, he says, don't talk so proudly. If God wills, you will live tomorrow. So you best sort it out with him today. Right? Because Jesus' kingdom is not of this world. When we get that revelation that Jesus' kingdom is not of this world, it, it will change our entire life and deliver us from the filthy lucre of the world.
right? And the joy of knowing Jesus will be our strength, right? And we'll dwell in the secret place of the Most High. We'll dwell in the Word. We'll live there and relish in Him and relish in the Word and relish in the Living Word, relish in Christ the Word. Then we'll abide in the shadow. Right? We'll be right there with Him. As your shadow is with you, so we will be with Him as He is with Father. And you'll say of the Lord, He's my refuge. He's my location. That's where I'm located. If you're looking for me, I'm on the narrow road. Eh? I chose the narrow road, Him. Wide road leads to hell. Ain't no peace in any other way. I give you all the glory, Jesus. Right? And everybody sing. And amen and amen.